tired of using canned cranberry sauce or lumpy gravy on Thanksgiving, Chef John Paul showing us how to add the touch of a chef to both. Hi, John Paul. Hey, Kaylee. And we're in the home stretch. Hopefully you've been watching and every Friday we've been trying to build a new part of your Thanksgiving meal. So we did the ultimate mashed potatoes. We did um, our beautiful sweet potatoes with an apple glaze. We did the ultimate stuffing. All the recipes are on the website. So today we're talking about the two things that are gonna get passed around the most, the cranberry sauce and the gravy. And if you've ever fallen victim to lumpy gravy, we're gonna show you how to work around that. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do, and I'm actually gonna share a technique that I just picked up from a French chef. We're gonna make something called a roux, and traditionally a roux is made using flour and clarified butter or flour and oil. And it's a thickening agent, okay? Most of us are used to stirring flour in at the last minute, but that's how you get the lumps. So what we do is we move this in, and the new French technique is use whole butter. And just as it starts to melt, whisk in your flour so it has this beautiful buttery flavor to it. It doesn't taste greasy. And I want to get this to it's about the consistency of wet sand on a beach, right about there. So it's about a 50-50 ratio by weight. So I have about a quarter of a pound of butter. I'm going to use about a quarter of a pound of flour. All right, not a quarter cup or not four ounces of flour. Remember, it's a quarter pound. So throw it on a scale or just mix it till it's about that consistency. We're gonna let that cook out for about five minutes to get the raw starchy flavor out. Then we're gonna add some chicken stock to this. Now, I know a lot of you are used to scraping off the bottom of the pan and getting all the bits and all the rest of it, but you end up with like a cup and a half of gravy and you've got a 30 pound bird. So you've got enough gravy to make like maybe two people happy. Cause I don't know about you, but at my house, when the gravy's passed, it requires a foot pump cause people are just hosing down everything on the plate. So so you want to make sure that you have extra. Now our cranberry sauce over here, I have fresh cranberries. You can buy them fresh or frozen and they're absolutely wonderful. Um, I, we were talking earlier in the show, if you're gonna put out, you still have to put out the little jellied log, those little cranberry pucks that you slice out of the, out of the container. You still have to put those out. But this is my favorite and it's so simple. All I have to do is take my cranberries. I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh orange juice to this, just a little bit. I'm gonna need a bunch of sugar. Now, if you've never made cranberry sauce before, this is gonna seem like an absurd amount of sugar, and it is, but cranberries are so tart that it really requires a lot of sugar. And then I'm gonna add some orange zest. Now, I can do this a couple ways. I can use my zester, or I can use just a peeler. And if I do the peeler, what I'm gonna do is throw in a piece or two, let it simmer away, and then pull the pieces out at the last minute. So I just get the flavor from it. Now I'm gonna add something a little different to this. I'm gonna add some diced apple. Now the apple's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna help bind it, but it's also gonna give me a little mellow spot to it. So I've got some additional texture. It's gonna, it's gonna be kind of soft, and it's gonna add a uh, kind of a, a very cool visual appeal to it. Real, real simple. All I need to do, peel it, and just, oh. Didn't peel it all the way, bad chef. Okay. Peel this guy all the way down and just simply slice it, okay? I don't need an apple core or any of that because I'm gonna take that all out and then just cut this guy into chunks. Beautiful. And I want it rustic. Remember, you don't have to be perfect with the dicing here. Just make sure it's fairly uniform because this is all gonna mush down, okay? Think of like applesauce. Now some other things that I can add to this, I can add cinnamon, I can add cumin. I've seen people actually add sage to it, add, uh, make it a little more uh, uh, savory with things like parsley, okay? You can really get, a, get creative. If you wanna add pomegranate juice, that's very hip right now. But that's all I have to do. And just take my beautiful apples, throw them in there, and I'm gonna cover this up. Now just make sure that it doesn't stick because I do have sugar in there. So I wanna make sure that I'm kinda checking the bottom every now and then. But on medium heat, this will take about 10 or 15 minutes. Do it a day ahead. I'm back over here, check this out. It's gorgeous, it's lost that starchy flavor. Now, when I say starchy, it shouldn't taste like raw pie dough, okay? That's kind of a flattened uh, flour mixture that you might be familiar with. Now I'm gonna add my chicken stock. Oh. You see how it tightens up? As Soon as I mix it in, whisk it, and it comes together like a paste, look at that. Look at how tight that gets. Now this is called a velouté. This is one of the five mother sauces that all classical, classically trained chefs have to know. All right, and a lot of other sauces are built off of this. So what I'm gonna do with those pan drippings is when this sauce is built, okay, I'm gonna have about a quart of sauce. Then I'm gonna drain the fat out of my roasting pan. I can use a little bit of white wine or a little more chicken or turkey stock in the bottom of it. 
get that good stuff out and add it to this. So instead of building my sauce off the pan, I'm gonna use that to fortify this beautiful gravy that I'm making now. Simple, look how fast this comes together. I'm amazed. And I wanna simmer this out for about 20 minutes. Now as that's cooking, I'm gonna add a couple of flavors to it. Now nothing is more Thanksgiving than our beautiful poultry seasoning. I remember we used this in our stuffing last week. So I'm gonna add some of that in. Now, if this is the same poultry seasoning that you used last year, check it for intensity. Okay, it might be kind of dead. Remember, grind, ground spices lose their flavor very, very quickly. And then to finish it off, a little bit of fresh sage, just for some texture and some flavor. And as much as you want. Remember, this is all based on flavor. A recipe, when it comes to stuff like this, is a suggestion. And that's it. I'm gonna let this cook for about 20 minutes. It's gonna thicken up nicely. If I wanna hit it with a little bit of cream at the end just to make it a little more luxurious, I can do that. And then here's our finished cranberry sauce after 20 minutes of cooking. It looks stunning, and it's a great juxtaposition of the John two Paul, dishes. it looks fabulous. Guys, Thank it's time, so it's much. Thanksgiving. Sage, is that becoming a trend as well? This is the third time this week we've seen it in cooking. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. But you're, you're, the, you're so original. I'm just wondering if it's a trend. <laughs> That's all. That's all. That's all. It was very good. Thank you. By the way, you can make a reservation. At